Greetings and good morning. It's Thursday, June 14th, 2018. I'm your host, Sean. The website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. And welcome back to the broadcast. And, um, you know, today I wanted to talk about, we're actually going to read uh, Hebrews chapter 3 and 4 today. And I just want to start kind of talking about this uh, what I kind of talked about a little bit on Friday's podcast last Friday was this endu- the importance of dur- enduring in the faith and how salvation belongs to those who finish, those who endure to the end, Jesus says. He says those who endure to the end will be saved. When he writes his letters to the churches, um, uh, when you read the book of Revelation, you read, you read the letters to the seven churches. Over and over and over, you see this theme about endurance, about finishing. And um, remaining, you know, the importance of remaining in the faith. Because it's less about, you know, did you follow X, Y, Z? It's, do you have faith? Do you believe have you trusted in the finished work of Jesus Christ? Have you entered into the the final Sabbath, the rest that is found in Jesus, in Messiah? Have you entered into that rest? Or are you like the unbelieving Israelites in the wilderness and their carcasses fell in the wilderness and they wandered 40 years because of their unbelief? It wasn't because they didn't obey all the rules and laws, which they didn't. Ultimately, it was because they failed to believe. And so I want to start uh, maybe having a conversation over the next few weeks about this. uh, About endurance, about uh, belief, and also about the day of the Lord is is another thing I'm, I'm looking into. Um, because when the resurrection happens really depends on what your definition is of the day of Christ uh, and the day of the Lord. And so I'm kind of examining that. Um, and so these are the kind of the thoughts that I, I've been having lately and that I want to share with you over the next uh, several weeks probably. Today I just want to read chapters 3 and 4 out of the book of Hebrews, which talks about entering into the rest of Christ, um, which can only be entered in through belief, which you have to hold fast to. You have to hold confidence in. Otherwise, and you have to hold it till the end. You have to finish. You know, Paul talks in his other letters about finishing that race. You know, run the race as as though you were trying to win it. And this idea of endurance and and Jesus wouldn't be talking to us again about having to persevere. That's a word that he uses a lot. Persevere in the faith. We wouldn't need to persevere in the faith unless we were potentially going to experience life in such a way that our faith requires perseverance. And I think as we look at the world today, we look at the way things are and the way things are developing and the insanity that's developing around us and the disdain and hatred for for God you know godliness and Christianity um, what's happening to our brothers and sisters in different parts of the world you know perseverance and endurance certainly comes to mind it is something that we're going to need and that we need right now you know the spiritual warfare is ramped up to Levels I've never seen in my life, never experienced in my life, in my walk. And I'm sure many of you understand uh, what I'm talking about. And not only do we have to persevere in the faith, maybe you're listening for the first time and you're hearing, hey, trust in Jesus, trust in Christ, there is no other way. And you're being resisting, you're resistant. And the scripture says, and we're going to read that here in the book of Hebrews, as the writer of Hebrews quotes it from the Psalms, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, talking about the unbelieving Israelites. Today is the day of salvation. 
today. Tomorrow is promised to no man. Let's take a look at the book of Hebrews. So if you are reading along in a Bible, chapter 3 and 4 is what we're going to be reading. I'll be reading from the King James Version this morning. And uh, let's just dig in and, and see what the Spirit of God has to say to us this, today. Chapter 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, Listen to this, friends. But Christ, the son over his own house, whose house are we if... Big word there. If is a big word. The writer saying, you are this if you are the following thing. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end. Right, they're saying, hey, you're a partaker in this. You're part of this. You're part of this thing with Messiah. If you hold fast to this belief, if you remain confident and joyful in this belief until the end. Which means if you don't remain confident in it, you don't continue to be in belief, in faith until the end, you are not part of the house of Messiah. Verse 7, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost, Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, so I swear in my wrath they shall not enter in. To my rest. Those seven verses, uh, or not seven verses, verses seven through eleven that we just read there. That's a quote from the Psalm, Psalm 95, which is also verse seven through eleven, which says, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as a provocation as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. God's saying, look, they saw all these things. Witnessed it with their own eyes. Saw all these miracles. But still fell to temptation, which was the temptation to fall into unbelief. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, God said. And said, it is a people who do err in their heart and have not known my ways. And to whom I swear in my wrath they should not enter into my rest. Verse 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. He's saying, be aware. Take inventory of your life, of your heart, lest there be in any of you an evil heart. And what's what causes the evil heart? Lack of faith, unbelief. 13, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. The writer's saying, hey, you've got to exhort one another. Why do we exhort one another? So that we don't, so one, we don't fall to sin. Lifting up each other, encouraging one another. Of course, all I see online mostly is people tearing each other down. And I'm speaking of Christians, not of the secular world. Obviously, the secular world does that. But I see that on every YouTube channel that I follow, 
you know, every person trying to share the good news, including myself, I see people coming to the comments trying to tear them down. This verse is saying, exhort one another daily. While it is still called today. Don't wait till tomorrow to do this, is what he's saying. Let any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. We are partakers of Messiah if, there's the word if again, you are a partaker of Messiah if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. He's just, he's just saying it again. You are a participant in this thing with Messiah as long as you remain in the faith and you hold it till the end. Verse 15, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as the provocation for some when they had heard did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? The writer's asking this question. Who was who God talking about when he says this? That generation grieved me forty years. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that we could not enter in because of unbelief. So he's saying, in comparison to how the Israelites, that generation, wandered 40 years, died in the wilderness, their carcasses fell in the wilderness because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter into the land, the promised land. They were not able to enter into that rest because of their unbelief. Likewise, if we do not have faith, if we do not trust in Messiah, we will not enter into Messiah's rest because of our unbelief. Let's uh, read chapter 4 here. It's only 16 more verses. Starting in chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest they promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. He's saying, take this seriously. You know, I, this needs to be taught in the church more. <laughs> because all you hear is the fuzzy lovey. And look, it is there is some th parts of it that are that way. But people are not hearing, hey, persevere in the faith. Hey, repent of your sin. Hey, you know, examine your faith daily, the scriptures say, and make sure that you're in the faith. Work your salvation out with fear and trembling, the scriptures say. This is very serious. You have to take it serious. Let me start over. Let us therefore fear, lest they promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that have heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest on the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. The writer here is talking to some Jewish believers, or Jewish uh, audience. That's why the book is called Hebrews. He's talking about how the gospel was preached to them first, and they have they did not get to enter into the rest because they didn't believe. Verse 7, Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if, Jesus, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. He's talking about you're no longer trying to, you know, your salvation is no longer about effort. You're entering, in, you're entering into a permanent rest in Messiah. 
For he that hath entered into his rest, he has also ceased from his own works as God did from his. Verse 11, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. The example he's speaking of is the one that we've been talking about this whole time. The Israelites failing to enter into the promised land because of their unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's a very powerful statement, verse 12 there, about God's word. God's word. This is why we do this. This is why scripture and prophecy, truth fed, why this exists. Because the word of God never returns void. It always accomplishes its goal. God's word is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow. And here's a big thing. It's also a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the hearts because when you read this, It'll show you your real heart. It'll show you your real intents. The word of God shines a light on you. That's why you see people flee from the scriptures like a light, like a flashlight being shined on a cockroach. Because it exposes us. It makes us vulnerable. It makes us naked before God it reveals our intents we say oh this is God's standard this is what God says is truth this is what God says is right but here's what I think and do and feel it exposes us we have to rest in Jesus and what happens friends when you put your faith in Christ you believe and you trust You say, I can't do this on my own. I need this mercy, this forgiveness that's a free gift from God through the shed blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. Anyone who who believes this, who believes that God rose Him from the dead, will be saved. Then what happens is God gives you a new heart. He writes the law on your heart. And the Spirit of God comes upon you. You become a new creation, new creation, a new creature in Christ. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. What that means is not that suddenly you become perfect and never sin. What it means is that which the old man, you're just not the same. You're different. And I'm not, you know, I, I heard a pastor once say, I'm not who I want to be, but I'm not who I used to be. And that's certainly true for me, and hopefully it's true for you. We're not who we want to be, right? We still fail and fall and have to seek the forgiveness and the mercy seat of Christ. But man, not not anything like what I used to be like, right? A few more verses left. Let's continue. Verse 13, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him whom we have to do. Verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with feelings or infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That is chapters 3 and 4 out of the book of Hebrews. You know, this thing we call the walk, it requires perseverance and endurance, and it's hard. And if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves falling to some old things and some old ways. And what happens is when you start to fall to sin, you start to stumble, 
It damages your relationship with God. It creates a separation between you and the Father. And when that separation begins to happen, your faith starts to waver. And you start to question, is this even really real? You know, you start to go through all those emotions. That's why the scriptures talk talk about, hey, we need to encourage one another and lift up one another lest they fall to, to sin. Exhort, every, exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened, and what hardens you? The sin. Through the deceitfulness of sin. We have to endure in this face, faith. We are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Don't provoke God like they did then in the wilderness. You must persevere in the faith. Everybody struggles. Everybody goes through these valleys. I've been going through a valley myself for quite several months. And it's been hard. It's been testing. But it's reminded me that this, this that there is peaks and valleys. That there is times where perseverance and endurance is necessary. Where you have to really dig in. Most people aren't willing to dig in. I think that's one of the differences between the remnant of God and the, what you would call, I guess, false converts. Uh, people who aren't really in the faith, they're just, you know, they're just dead bones. They're not interested in being transformed or changed or turning away from wickedness and sin. They love the world more than they love God. The remnant, while we still face the same temptations and battles, the difference is we actually go to war against it. And it's a war that takes place in us, in our spirit. It's a war with our flesh. We're grieved by sin. We fight. That's the difference. And I'm sure many of you on the other end know exactly what I'm talking about. So let this be an encouragement to you. Don't be surprised if you find yourself in a position where you have to endure and persevere. Just make sure that you do. And you don't do it in your own strength. You do it by calling on the one true God. You do it by resting in the finished work of Messiah, understanding that you don't save yourself. He saved you. Your salvation comes through belief in that and that alone. It doesn't come by your ability to you know, not pick up sticks on Saturday. It doesn't come by your ability to observe, you know, laws and regulations. Your obedience to God will be a result of your faith. But your salvation comes strictly through belief in this finished work. Enter into that rest, friends. And if you're listening to this podcast and you've been wavering and you've been on the fence... Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, call upon the name of Jesus. Trust in that. Walk in it. Start to learn about it. Start reading the Bible. Not as a means of salvation, but as a means to understand God. That's the message for the day, friends. And I pray in the name of Jesus that it blessed you. Peace and grace be with all of you, and until next time, God bless.